We all know that the Middle East is known for its sprawling golden deserts and its scorching heat. So it's only natural that it's got a lack of water resources due to the harsh climate. The condition was extremely worse in Libya, a country sandwiched between the Mediterranean Sea and North African countries like Egypt and Sudan. Life was difficult here because of the severe water scarcity. So to solve this problem and to put people out of their misery, the government formulated this ultimate plan to deliver water to the country's residents and ensure that their thirst is quenched. They managed to engineer the greatest man-made project under ground pipeline network. How extensive is this project? Is it gonna be able to do what it's promised? Stay tuned to find out. As you all know, the Gulf region survives because of its oil reserves. It is this black gold that has made it one of the richest regions in the entire world. Although the United Arab Emirates and Kuwait topped the list of the Arab countries that hit the gold mine because of their rich petroleum deposits, Libya ain't too far behind. But this country lacks another resource that's essential to sustain life. Water. Back in the day, before oil reserves were discovered, Libya was heavily dependent on international aid. But in the 1950s, along with the unearthing of huge oil pits, they also found large water aquifers, which would later on solve the country's wide water crisis. However, as the oil industry developed, the existing water resources were nearly sucked dry. The massive construction projects undertaken to meet the growing needs of this rising economy and growing population led to the unnatural streams being emptied. At the same time, however, the government under Muammar Gaddafi's leadership justified this overuse by painting out how the country's growth had skyrocketed because of the profits of the export of hydrocarbon resources. But as time went by, it became more and more obvious that draining the water bodies under the tagline of development wasn't doing any good. So the engineers working under government suggested utilizing the country's groundwater aquifers to provide a constant supply of water to sustain the needs of the future. As we'd mentioned earlier, an extensive underground source of water was first discovered in the Al Kufra area. It was during an exploration drilling for oil of the desert that it was found that the earth had much more than black gold. Scientists were curious about this discovery. Subsequent research indicated that this water source was part of the Nubian sandstone aquifer system. This was a fossilized water reservoir. This means that this aquifer is anywhere from 10,000 to a million years old. So how exactly was it formed? Well, just before the end of the last ice age, water percolated into the sandstone and settled down into these reservoirs. Initially, the government had planned on setting up large-scale agricultural projects in the midst of the desert. This would sort of be like an oasis. However, due to feasibility reasons, a massive network of pipelines was planned to be designed to supply water to different parts of the city. But this idea was opposed by many. Instead, desalinization was proposed. However, although this process of extracting salt from seawater and purifying it for use as drinking water sounded good in theory, there were several factors as to why it couldn't be implemented. This project was briefly introduced in the 1960s, but the main reason why it failed was because of the high economic costs behind the desalinization process. The desalinization plant also required regular maintenance so that it could be ensured that the water is drinkable. The lack of accessible desalinization technology and infrastructure was also a major concern back in the day. So plans were made to construct the Great Man-Made River Project, or GMMRP. This is the largest scale civil engineering project that will transport water from aquifers located deep underneath the Earth's crust, all the way to the coastal cities through a network of underground pipes. The cities on the Libyan coast house about 5.38 million people, which is a vast majority of the country's population. Don't you think that it's kind of ironic that they face a water crisis despite being surrounded on all sides by water? These underground reservoirs are massive. So many Libyan officials have promised that these reservoirs would continue to supply water for thousands of years. But although it sounds nice, no way that could be true. The reason is that the Nubian sandstone aquifer system is ancient, and it's definitely not rechargeable, and the amount of water is finite. This means that if all the water were to be drained out, then there's no way of refilling it. Some critics even went as far as to say that the reservoir won't be able to supply water for the 21st century. That is a huge cause for concern. If something like this were to happen, millions of people would suffer. With no means to quench their thirst, the population of an entire region would perish. But later on, a group of researchers studied the feasibility of the project, and soon the Great Man-Made River Authority, or GMMRA, was formulated. The entire process of constructing this project was divided into four different stages. Each stage was proposed to be concentrated in a particular geographic area and deliver predetermined volumes of water to those regions. 
Soon, the construction of the largest irrigation project in the world was set into motion. The Libyan government even proclaimed this project as the eighth wonder of the world. Is that a bit of a overstatement? Maybe a stretch? Well, the main plan was to drill wells that are located at a depth of over 100 meters. These wells would be connected to the coast by pipelines. Each of these pipes was constructed to deliver 6 million cubic meters of water every day. This might appear to be a huge amount of water, but that's just enough for the huge population occupying the coastal areas. Well, these pipelines are no ordinary pipes. They're huge, and they're 4,000 kilometers long. During the first phase of the project, 250,000 sections of pipe were laid. The pipes were manufactured in special factories in Libya. Even the material used is unique. The pipe was made up of layers of steel-reinforced pre-stressed concrete. That's to ensure maximum durability. Each of these sections was laid out in trenches that are almost 7 meters deep. This extreme depth was accomplished with the help of the specially built cranes and pushed into place by bulldozers. The joints were then sealed with giant rubber rings and cement grout. The sections of the trench are also filled in. In the 1980s, Gaddafi inaugurated the first phase of the Grand Project and even laid the first cornerstone of the project at Sarir Aquifer in eastern Libya. This project was mainly aimed at the agricultural areas. A combination of harsh climate, intense heat, and high evaporation rates are fatal for vegetation, so this constant supply of water could be a saving grace for plants in the area. Domestic use is given the second priority, and industries were the last parties to be considered. So, how much do you think a large-scale project like this costs? Well, the figures aren't exactly clear, however, it is roughly estimated that it's 20 to 25 billion dollars that were spent making this man-made project. The GMMRA has previously declared that the total expenditure was exaggerated, but we have no confirmation about its validity. The GMMRP is almost fully funded by the Libyan government. Yeah, that isn't too much of a surprise considering how much oil the country exports. Only 1% of income tax is received from the general public in terms of deductions from public wages. Today, this massive pipeline network manages to deliver 2.5 million cubic meters of water daily to several parts of the city. However, this volume fluctuates at times. The usage cost for one cubic meter of water was about $0.033 for agricultural use. It was slightly higher if the water was to be used for domestic or industrial applications. So what is the current status of the project? Is it able to deliver everything that we promised? Today, the project operates with two of its originally four planned phases. This really indicates the efficiency of the project in delivering water regularly regardless of the political and economic situations in Libya. Another main highlight of the way in which the project is handled is that it's well connected to the public. The GMMRP has a Facebook page that the authorities use to update the public about any accidents or maintenance operations. This clearly shows transparency, which is always appreciated. The government is also concentrating on imprinting the project for the greater good of society. Efficiency is always a concern in any engineering structure, so to improve their productivity of the pipeline system in al Hasanewa. Sal al Jafara area, a total of 34 pumps have been installed. The initiative has helped the government to go beyond its previously set targets for enhancing efficiency by 45.3%. This is definitely great news. What do you think of this greatest man-made river project? Do you think that it's good? Maybe a permanent solution to Libya's water scarcity issues? In the horrible circumstance that the aquifer dries up, are desalinization plants feasible? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below.